So I'm so happy for you all to be here today because we have the incredible treat of meeting with an amazing new best-selling author, but longtime thought leader, because this gentleman, as you'll meet uh, in a moment, Savio is um, a multi-talented, uh, brilliant creative who also has written a book uh, based on a mission, a mission that emerged out of his own life experience, out of challenge, out of adversity, and has turned it into a way to make a massive change around the world. So Savio, thank you for being here. We're so grateful to hear more about your story. I'm really appreciative, Sarah. Thank you so, so much. I really, I really appreciate this. Well, I have the, had the amazing pleasure of um, growing to um, adore you, love you, be in your number one fan club and support you with our team on the launch of your incredible new book. And so I'd love to start with, my copy is still on its way. So if you have yours that you can hold up for everybody so they can see, but we'll, of course, we'll post the link. You guys will see the picture here and, and you can check out the book. But Savio, you know, tell us a little bit about the book and why you wrote it. So Sarah, really, in 2014, I almost died. Um, and that's really a um, serious thing that at the time uh, was a ball of confusion for me. Uh, so just back step a little bit. Uh, I'm a cancer survivor. I'm also a board certified wellness coach. I'm a podcaster. Um, and I wrote the book because um, the book is called I Survived Cancer. Here's how I did it. Uh, uh, so I interviewed nearly 175 cancer survivors for my syndicated column. And I picked 35 of those stories to tell, including my own. Yes. And I wanted to really inspire individuals. I know if I saw a book like that on day one in my oncology office, yeah. it would have put me on a whole different track emotionally. It would have allowed me to see possibilities, whereas I only saw maybe one avenue, which was obviously, you know, sort of doing what the doctors wanted me to do and, and relying only on that expertise. Yes. Um, and the stories are so emotionally driven because they, um, two of them had cancer when they were really young, like as children. Um, one of them had a 3% chance of living. Yeah. Um, one of them had a 5%. A couple of people had double cancer diagnoses uh, back to back. Right. Um, so I really wrote the book because I really wanted to not only inspire cancer patients at the moment who are going through the struggle, but survivors, because there's a lot of stuff that happens to you after a cancer diagnosis that no one knows right. about. And then also there's individuals who want to support uh, individuals that they know who have cancer, which touches pretty much about everyone in the world. Uh, right. And I just wanted the book to be a, a foray into that conversation. Well, it is a stunning book. And when you all see it and with the picture here at the interview, you'll see the gorgeous pictures of the stories, the faces behind the stories in this beautiful book. And Savio, I know that I, the minute I met you, my heart cracked open and I said, I'm gonna do anything I can to you know, support you in this book because it is such, as you said, I had a different kind of health crises around you know, fertility and reproductive trauma and things. And you feel so alone a lot of times as the patient and you feel identified as your illness and your diagnosis and you're a, you're, you're a machine that gets to be fixed or not. And, and it's just a really demoralizing, can be a dehumanizing experience. And you have brought the humanity, the story, the hope, the hero's journey um, back to people who, whether they're going through it or someone in their life is going through something. And sadly, like you said, you know, you could throw a paper plane and there's, there's nobody that doesn't even know someone or has had an experience. So what I wanted to geek out with you a little bit about today, in addition to sharing the very important message of this book, and, and I hope all of you who have either been touched by a cancer experience or supporting someone going through something will, will share this hope and this lighthouse with them. And I wanted to geek out a little because we're obviously all about, you know, the books and launches. I mean, Savio, you hit the bestseller list in every single category that your book was in. You are a multiple, you know, uh, Amazon bestseller. You have made, you know, new world, number one, new really, you had all these incredible things that happened the day of your launch. And I know because it's really scary when it's your first book to trust the process. And let's talk about some of the innovative things that you did to support this book, making the impact. Bestseller is just an indicator of impact, right? It's a great credential. It opens doors. We'll talk about all the awesome things that are opening up for you right now. But um, what are some of the things you did to let people know about the book? Yeah, so I have to say, I'm not someone who overshares on social media. I do post, so I'm a syndicate columnist. So I post my articles. It's pretty much yeah. there. I also you know, respond, but I needed your help. I needed expertise. And so I sought your expertise in the bestseller campaign uh, you, yeah. know, you guys offer. And what I really loved is working with your team member, Megan, and yeah. how she crafted that particular mission-driven pitch. 
And then from that, she was able to sort out a hundred influencers in my particular niche that would gravitate towards it. And that was all done on the back end. I knew for myself, and she obviously gave me the list. I was able to check out their socials. Uh, I knew for myself that if there is another person who's gone through a struggle or a similar struggle or understands the struggle, they would be more inclined to want to uh, talk about it, promote it, and also do all the things necessary for it. So that's number one. If it wasn't for your help, I don't think this would even happen. The second thing is I engaged my contributors. So 35 of the cancer survivors also contributed to the book. And so uh, I, once again, relied on your expertise to do what what is called a contributor's fire up training, where I had, I think I had 26 out of 35 because of, you know, work conflicts, not everyone could show up. And I had their PR reps also show up. And that created the enough buzz and the enough attention in order for them to feel an affinity towards it. Because telling a cancer story is not as simple as telling a story. And so a lot of them had to get out of their own comfort zone and realize that this could make a huge and broader impact and not so much about self, but more about what other, how they could serve other people. So that's number two. Other thing I was thinking about, I'm some, I'm someone who like gets inspiration when I'm taking a shower. I get inspiration when I'm sleeping. I'm a long time meditator. I've been meditating for 20 years. So I get these random insights. So some of the things uh, that I did was like, I, uh, I got an embosser. And basically I embossed the first page and it basically said, you know, first edition with the year. Then I wrote um, advanced reader copies on it and I included a number. So one out of 125. So I printed advanced copies of the book um, at a different um, uh, printing shop because I didn't want that to affect my Amazon. Amazon gives you a 30 day window. Uh, And so I hand wrote numbers and that sort of created this sort of like I had two people. One of them said, oh, my God, I'm book number 13. 13 is my lucky number. And I'm like. And I'm like, I, I don't know, it just happened. Another guy said to me, 18 in Hebrew is a powerful number. You gave me number 18. Oh. I don't know. But these were special to some people. I, for me, it was yeah. just, I was just doing it. I, in, I um, enlisted the help of my niece who helped me package all these 125 books. Um, so that was some of the things that I did. And of course, on social, you know, pre-launch, I mentioned it to family and friends yeah. uh, to sort of get the buzz Um, sort of going, but I would say those are pretty much the main things. And then I was like super detailed. So I worked with an editor, Authority Magazine was one who published it, but I was also very careful as to how it would be represented. I wanted to make sure the formatting was just perfect. I also included QR codes. So a lot of the contributors, about 12 of them, um, had YouTube videos with their articles in my series. And so I I, um, basically included QR codes to go directly to YouTube Then what I also did is I also hired someone to take, so I found timestamps from their particular uh, YouTube video. Each video was about two to three minutes long and he created a book trailer. And I'm telling you right now on in within 18 hours, that book trailer on LinkedIn, which is my primary place where I post most of my articles, got over a thousand video views for people on LinkedIn to stop and watch a video. is huge because their business they, they, they got a limited amount of time during the day. They don't, they don't have an endless scroll hours like, like Instagram. So that's pretty much the things that I did in order to, um, oh, I'm sorry. I also created a website. So my background is creating websites. Yes. So I created a website as well. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of things. And, and what about, did you do an NFP or was there I some, did. I, I, like, did. I want everyone to hear this. And then, and then we're going to do a little breakdown of all this. Cause if your head is spinning and you're like, Savio did so much, he did. And I'm going to break it down with you all so that you kind of see how this can be more manageable than you think. So tell us about that piece though, because I think sure. I like talking about what's on the cutting edge, right? Sure, sure. Absolutely. So uh, there's something in the world that some people have heard the buzzword NFT. It's non-fungible fungible token. Basically yeah. something that's fungible is in the real world. Something that's non-fungible is not in the real world. So it's digital. Yes. People are using NFT to create digital art yes. and whatnot. So I had someone create 3D covers for my book and yes. the front and the back side by side And I created an NFT out of that. And I asked my contributors, I said, I'm going to give you this NFT for free. Usually there's like, it basically has to be attached to an Ether, Ethereum, you know, um, um, wallet. And it gets complicated. But in any event, only four of them are in the NFT sort of space or purchased it. And they gave me their NFT wallet address. It's basically like a link, right? It has a series of like, you know, words and numbers. Uh, And I basically sent them those NFTs. Uh, I did that on purpose because... Yeah, I could send each one of them the book cover and it's a JPEG, but NFTs are special because what it does is it authenticates that you are the person who received it 
And right. it authenticates the fact that that no one else could um, damage the fact that you got that particular. Exactly. So exactly. It, it has a history behind it. You bet. So I want to just give you, I mean, if everyone watching, if you're like, wow, that's a lot. It is, right? Savio is an A player. He is going to come. And this is what I know of you, Savio. You are a hundred percent all in on your mission. So I want everyone thinking about this. Now you had fears right? Was any of this scary to invest in influence? You know, if, if so some of you are like, what are all these things? The inf I'll break down what Savvy did. And we're going to talk about the mental journey, how you, how you kept yourself motivated. And my, my hope is for everybody listening, pick one of these things to think about doing first, you know, like you can sequence some of these, but Savio did the info bestseller campaign that, that we teach at Thought Leader Academy. So that's where our team goes out, finds the influencers, creates a mission bridge. If we go out to people and say, promote my book. Yeah. Some people that know and love us. Well, Savio didn't do that. You created a mission bridge. Like, Hey, has your life been affected? Are your followers lives being affected by cancer in this case? I'm on your team. I wrote this to serve people. When, you, when someone gets behind a cause, they will say yes nine times more than if it's promote something, right? So we do the mission bridge, right? And then we fired up your influencers and saw what was in it for them. If you want your, your contributors, right? If you're doing a collaborative book, you wanna let people know why is it to their advantage? It's not just doing you a favor. They were helping others. They're creating ripple effects. They can use it for their own career. Like we trained them on that, right? And then that got them really like excited to serve and lead and be seen and be visible because it's it's uncomfortable to share about a health crisis. We sometimes have shame or we don't want people to see us like that or whatever it is. And then the QR codes, you guys are sick of hearing me talk about. I'm doing them in my new book too. They're, they're, they're amazing. People can then engage and go to that book website and watch these videos. Video books are the new frontier. And you created an experience and an interactive portal, you know, for people with the books, so you can serve them more. And, you know, and then, and then yes, the, the, I love that you did. I mean, for the people that are savvy enough to, to play with, you know, um, to play with new technology, you create an option for them, you know, and you, and you really, um, like stood in excellence from the cover design to the website design and, and made it world-class. So, so what was the hardest part about doing these things? Yeah. So I was telling, so my editor um, of Authority Magazine, his name is Itzy, and, and he's the one who met, so my, basically the column, so I start off with the column, I survived cancer, here's how I did it. Yes. It got so, like, there was so much noise, positive noise from it, that I interviewed over 175 of, of individuals. And he said, we need to turn this into a book. And I said to him, I paused and I said to him, listen, I'm not the type of guy who wants to write a book because my name is on the book. I've never been that guy. I know people dream of that. It's not me. I would want a book if people want to know what's in the book. And yeah. so that's where it really started. But for me, honestly, Sarah, for three months, I had sleepless nights. I yeah. was like, I was not eating because I felt like I was also not only carrying my story, but 35 other cancer survivor stories. And sure. I felt if I didn't do it right, and if it wasn't shown well, then it, 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 it's a reflection on me. And so I just made sure that I gave every single ounce, just like I did with my cancer journey, every single ounce of my energy, energy and mental energy, physical energy, energy, emotional energy, because I knew for me, this could make a, in, the impact that I would want for it to make. Yes. Um, and so for me, that was probably the hardest part. Uh, creative, uh, all those other things are very easy for me to sort of tap into. So that wasn't really difficult. Uh, executing on that is not really difficult. And I have to preface this by saying, I'm also a wellness coach. I'm a board certified wellness coach. So yeah. for me, I was also coaching myself through this and saying, what would yes. you tell your clients? Do you yes. want them to show up? What's the vision you want to create? And I was questioning myself every day. And a good mentor of mine actually uses this phrase a lot. And he says, who are you fighting for? And mm -hmm. I kept hearing that over and over again. I am fighting for cancer survivors. I'm fighting for patients. I'm fighting mm -hmm. for loved ones who don't know what to say when, mm -hmm. when, when their loved one or someone who, who, who they love is in the hospital. I'm fighting for those individuals. Oh, Savio. So let's talk about the rewards. You had sleepless nights. You had to coach yourself. You did mindset work. We, you know, you got support, all of that good stuff. You were so brave and so focused on your mission and you let it guide you. What has been happening? You're going somewhere in two days. Like just tell us the highlights, like the top five things that have happened recently in your life now that you are an even more known uh, thought leader in this area. 
Sure, absolutely. I think I forgot to also mention too. I did handwritten notes with the book as well. Yeah, so I, made sure and I that tell the book everyone do it. I'm getting ready for ours now, and we're practicing. We're getting it all like set up for our May launch. Yeah, go. Okay, so tell us yeah. what are some awesome things that have been happening. Sure. No, but what was great about that is that that particular card inspired people to write Amazon reviews. I didn't have to actually even ask them. They wanted to do it. They read the book. It's 260 pages, so it takes a while to get through. Yeah. My book launched officially two weeks today. So um, it's only been two weeks, takes people a while to read books. Um, and so the great stuff that's been happening as a result of it is not only hitting Amazon bestsellers and having the sales rise up, um, it's opportunities. I got five podcast guesting uh, um, um, uh, you know, requests. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm also going to South by Southwest. So I'm a syndicated columnist. So I'm covering South by Southwest and there's a lot of interviews. So I get pitched a lot. I literally get like 20 yeah. emails a day from pitches. So of course I'm going to leverage my book in a very you know, um, honest way. Um, but I'm also there to sort of right, bring attention to what South, you know, South by Southwest has to offer. Uh, yeah. So that's really happening, which I'm really excited about um, as well. Amazing. And and did you do Mexico or was it Costa Rica? Like uh, I, you've had some other little juicy. I did. I did because of my syndicate calm. I've, I've, I've been to Mexico. So I, I, I did a travel um, experience um, with like like seven other journalists. Um, it was like yes. a really one of a kind Uber experience um, oh. as well. Uh, I also did CES. I was supposed to go to the, cons the Consumer yeah. Electronics Show, but I couldn't go because of COVID, but I did attend virtually. Uh, and there is an option to do something in Jordan, which is a big wellness uh, event, which is not secured yet. So I'm not yes, going to, you know, I'm not going to hold, <laughs> let's all hold best thoughts that Savio <laughs> books that and the BBC thing. I mean, I feel like every day I'm getting some awesome update of, of yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. The BBC wants to um, uh, do a feature on some of the contributors and, yeah. uh, and their story. So that might happen as well. And then also two other journalists, one in Sydney, um, um, uh, Sydney, Australia wants to do a, a feature or a piece. And I also have to say, and your, your probably viewers are probably gonna be like, he knows a lot of people. It's true, I write a lot of stories. So there's a lot of people that they're connected yeah. to me. I have a college friend who actually works for a really, really big entertainment company. And he's like, I bought your book. Um, there is someone in there who's a Hollywood voice actor. I wanna do a feature on it. So I'm like, that's great. <laughs> like, like the floodgates. I just, you know, we're getting ready to host our Write and Grow Rich retreat um, coming up here, depending on when everyone's watching this. Um, and this is, do you feel like your life is more rich in all ways because you said yes to being a columnist, authoring the book, being a leader? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do, so cancer taught me one big thing, vulnerability. I had to rely on other people. I was always like, I'll do it my own. I've traveled mm -hmm. six continents on my own. When you're in a chemo bed for five hours and they're like, someone needs to pick you up, someone really needs to pick you up, like yeah. literally needs to pick you up and feed you because you're too tired in order yeah. you know, to get it done. So this really gave me this ability to not only be vulnerable and ask for things, but yeah. also connect with people. I know COVID was a really, really big damper on it, um, but it sort of allowed me to feel like there's a lot of options out there and I, I don't need to be scared anymore because my story's out there. Like the shame that I felt, I felt shame with cancer and I know it's really weird, but I did. I felt it, shame. You know, with it. I felt shame with all. It's awful that we do that of, of, a, of any time to take in even more love. And then we feel I felt broken and defective yeah. and like my body didn't work. And somehow yeah. I was my fault. And oh, yeah, the visual for me was in the book, The Scarlet Letter with Hester Prynne yeah. with the big S. I saw it as the big C, literally the big C on, on my chest. And I was like, I literally, to this day, Sarah, honestly, my extended family still doesn't know I had cancer in 2014. Sure. Only my mother, father, um, sisters, and, you know, and their, you know, um, yeah. husbands know. But yeah. I, I, I felt shame around it. I did. And has this purged some of that at all? Absolutely. This, this yeah. has purged a lot of it because not only yeah. do I tell my story, I'm then yeah. saying, you have cancer. But cancer is not a death sentence. And I kept hearing that over and over again from everyone's story. Cancer is not an absolute death sentence. Yes, we have lost people. I've lost people. I've yeah. gone through this thing where I felt guilty about you know, being alive and why is my friend dead? But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't mean that. And what I want the book to be is a powerful reminder that we can pick up the broken pieces, yeah. that there's life after cancer, there's hope. And the key is to try to really dig deep and do all you can. I made cancer survival my mission. It, I focused like a laser beam on yes. the treatment and I sought out everything and everything. And I said to myself, as long as I do my part, the rest is not up to me.
Savio, thank you. Thank you for being the extraordinary, extraordinary leader and human that you are. I was touched, like I said, from the moment I met you, I'm sure everyone watching is having that response. Um, the audiobook is is now um, imminent. And so we're going to make sure everyone has a link to the print book. If you like to listen, uh, Savia has made the audiobook, and And uh, we'll make sure you have you have links to everything coming up. We are wishing you the absolute best, continued perfect health, wild success with everything you do from here. I know that this is just the beginning. Thank you so much, Sarah. I really appreciate it. And everyone, do not be afraid. Focus like a laser beam on this book and yeah. it will manifest in the physical material world. Yes, it will. Yes. All right. Thanks. Thanks so sure. much, Savio. Sure.